G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy Reacts Round 2 Edition. Today, as I'm recording this, it is April Fool's, and somehow I managed to fall for about three different pranks already. Firstly, I believe that John Walswold was sacked this morning when I first read it. Secondly, the bit about Pat Cripps losing his shit at Carlton. And thirdly, and most disappointingly, that New South Wales were bringing out police cats. I really don't know why I fell for that one. Maybe part of me just wanted it to be true. But it's also Monday today, which means it's time to break down the round that was. It was another bloody interesting round, and I have to say it's probably one that's asked as many questions as it's answered. First of all, I want to talk about Richmond and how the wheels apparently seem to be falling off. Now, the pies were just too good for him on Thursday night, and their ball use in particular was really slick. In reality, I thought Richmond were actually quite lucky to be even as close as they were at three-quarter time. Trelaw was absolutely brilliant through the midfield, and we all know what Dugowie did, kicking five awesome goals. Now the pressure's really starting to mount on Richmond because they've just got smashed by a contender. And to compound that, they've got no rants for the season, Rewald's out for eight weeks, Hawley's done his hamstring, and they're also gonna be without Caddy and Grigg for a little bit longer as well. To be honest, I think Richmond have been kind of blessed by the injury gods in recent years. I don't wanna say it's karma, because I don't believe in karma. But on the balance of probabilities, this was probably bound to happen at some point. This week they've got a tough upcoming game against the Giants in Sydney and they've actually lost their last two games against them there. Now the season is long and perhaps they're probably just getting all of their shit luck out of the way early. But what they want to avoid is losing all their confidence before they really get their season going. The second big talking point for me was how the Cats absolutely murdered Melbourne. In my opinion, and it's probably a big call for round two, but I think the Cats have returned to Premiership relevancy. They were absolutely dominant at the coal face, they moved the ball well and they converted well in front of goal. In rounds one and two, they've taken down Collingwood and then smashed Melbourne, two of the teams people had suspected might be premiership contenders this year. We saw how well Collingwood played in round two, that beating them in round one was a fairly good effort. I feel like the Cats have so much star power and they're starting to play like the team we thought they might be last year. In particular, Dangerfield and Kelly are absolutely firing at the moment. And they've got guys like Duncan, Ablett and Selwood who can support them. They probably had a bit of a missing piece last year with a small pressure forward, but Dowhouse has come in and filled that role really well and he's probably one of the better ones in the business. What we're also starting to see is that next generation of talent coming in and contribute as well. Parfit's been there for a couple of years. Radagalia started to show his wares. Brian Myers has come in and played well straight away, which is no surprise to me. And Charlie Custable comes in and as a second year mid is able to contribute really well as well. They had a shoddy season last year Geelong, and I think that caused a few people to write them off, but I think they're back this year. On the other side of the coin, Melbourne are in a really bad place. Bizarrely, they had plus 25 inside 50s against Geelong, but still only kicked six goals for the game. Now, the coach says they're underdone, and I'm probably inclined to believe that because we know how good they are when they're on. But they can't keep playing this way for much longer, otherwise it's going to have a psychological effect on them. If it's truly a fitness issue, then it's probably going to take about half a season to correct, so they're in danger of being on the brink. As we all know, the Demons aren't the only side in strife, the Bombers are in a world of pain as well. I don't want to sound too reactionary to just two rounds, but I think Woosh is already under immense pressure. And he's probably overtaken Alan Richardson as the favourite to get sacked first. Now we know the talent on the list is there. The boys can play, but they look really short of confidence and are making really stupid mistakes. They just look really disorganised. Some of the mistakes they're making were just unforgivable. I know the Saints are now 2-0, but the game against Essendon was of a really low standard. I think there is something wrong at Essendon and they need to turn it over quickly. They've got to be the most hot and cold team in the competition. Last year at times they looked like world beaters and then also lost to Carlton from memory. I guarantee you at some point this year they will go on a hot streak and we'll talk them up as a finals chance. But for now, they take on the D's on Friday night next week and that's a bit of a do or die clash. I don't believe in calling it season over after round three, but historically teams that go 0-3 don't make the finals. And one of Melbourne and Essendon will go 0-3 this week. In more positive news, however, we saw the Doggies execute an amazing comeback. I know there were some late contentious decisions against Sicily and Warpool in the dying stages, but for the Dogs to kick eight goals in the last 11 minutes is absolutely incredible. It doesn't really get much more impressive than that. On the Hawthorne side of things, I did notice they conceded a 50-point lead against Richmond in JLT as well. I don't know if there's enough of a trend for us to really delve deeper into that, but I wonder if there could be a fitness issue or if it's just focus. Either way, that was a huge win for the Doggies, and I wonder if they're starting to become their old self. Now, I know it's only round two, but the latter is pretty interesting to look at so far. It's interesting to see that the Bulldogs, Brisbane, Port and St Kilda are all 2-0 this year. Meanwhile, the big four contenders, as it were, were Richmond, Collingwood, West Coast and Melbourne, and they've all had at least one disappointing loss already. It's great for our game to see the ladder shuffle up like this, although I don't really expect it to stay this way all year. 
Now around the league, we had several youngsters getting it done this round. Now for the Eagles, Oscar Allen, my boy, kicked three brilliant goals and I feel like he's one to watch for the future. Now if Port Adelaide have three or four youngsters in the side, you've got Drew, Dersma, Butters and Rosie and they all had roughly 20 possessions and all played fairly well. Sam Walsh backed up his impressive debut with another 23 possessions. But for me, the number one youngster this week and my tip for the Rising Star nomination is Charlie Constable. As I mentioned before, had 31 possessions and seven clearances in that Geelong midfield. I wanna know how he fell so far down the draft. I know he tested really bad for endurance and his time trial, but it was ridiculous how he and Warple slid to the 30s and 40s of that draft. The Eagles had four second round picks that draft and I was just begging them to take Warple and Constable. And funnily enough, they look like two of the better talents out of that draft already. So I'm just saying Eagles, give me a job. I also want to give a shout out to some of the players this round that are starting to come of age. Josh Shackey was an absolute hero for the Bulldogs. He kicked three goals in the last quarter and had two while he was playing as a ruck. Now, it could be a bit of a flash in the pan performance, sort of like Tom Boyd. Actually, that's harsh. Tom Boyd still has plenty of time to turn it around. But Shackey's also pretty talented, so it could turn into something more for the Doggies. Another player who's starting to get recognised is Alex Sexton from the Gold Coast Suns. Somehow, he is our Coleman medal leader after two rounds with eight goals. Admittedly, he hasn't really done much to date, but it's hard to excel as a pressure forward in that Gold Coast forward line. Bagged four goals in round one, another four goals in round two, and was probably the difference in his side winning and losing in the end. It may have been one of the worst football games I've ever watched in my life, but credit to him, he's quite talented. Another small forward I'm gonna give credit to is Lincoln McCarthy, purely for the fact that he's pretty much completely unheralded, and not many people really had too much of an idea of him when he was at Geelong. He came over to join Lockie Neal, his best mate at Brisbane, and he's flourishing. Had a great JLT, kicked four goals in round one, and another two, and the ceiling goal against North Melbourne this round, so. Just like to tip my hat to those players. We also had some pretty awesome goals kicked in round two. On the Friday night, we all saw that amazing barrel by Paul Caesar. Then, of course, Buddy Franklin didn't want to be outdone and tried to match it with his own Goal of the Week nomination. But I also think Jack Petricelli is a dark horse to win the Goal of the Week nomination with this amazing effort sprinting from behind the pack. We also had one pretty clear Mark of the Week nomination, and that's Josh Bruce. Now, I was at the Eagles and Giants game on Saturday night, and I have to say, it was pretty awesome the way the Eagles unfurled the flag. I mean, you have to give credit to that Eagles mascot who is willing to backflip off the roof of up the stadium. Something tells me that's not the same mascot that does it every week. Surely, Surely they got someone else in a suit to be willing to do that, but if it actually was him, then bloody hell. It's also time for me to do the weekly shout out to our AFL fantasy winner. This week, we had a team called the Annihilators, coached by Derek F., who scored a ridiculous 23.55 this round. He now sits at the top of the league with 4,581 points, so... Good on you, Derek. He's an Eagles fan as well, so extra points. And in terms of footy tipping, we had my good friend Brendan Courtney win tipper of the round. If you watch our podcast, you may recognize him and his team name, which is called Big Booty Bitches. Grow up. But it wasn't enough to displace Jack of the Magpie, who is still our league leader, and he's got 10 with a margin of 32. Now, lastly, I just want to introduce our True Footy Player of the Year award. This award is something we decided to do this year for the first time, and how it works is all four of us True Footy vote 5-1 to one on the best players across all games for that round. We post the results weekly on our Facebook page, but I'm also going to post it in here. So, Stephen Canelio is our leader with 19 votes. Adam Trelaw has snuck up to second with his amazing round two. Pat Jangerfield in third place with 15 votes. Tom Rockliffe with 13 and Marcus Bontepelli with 10 votes. All right, guys, that's the end of True Footy Reacts for this week. If you like the video, please consider liking and subscribing. Thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate all the support we get. Thanks, guys. We'll see you next week.